Welcome back to the channel, friends. In today's video, I am excited to share with you a unique recipe on how to make tomato sauce from early and ripe tomatoes. This spectacular preserve is a great green tomato sauce for beginners if you're new to this kind of cooking. But this recipe was born out of a, let's say, interesting turn of events. I won't gripe and moan too much. Still, I do want to say that if, like me, you've been finding yourself with a massive amount of green unripe tomatoes due to climatic, seasonal or an asshole neighbor that's been spraying nasty chemicals all over the place, then you came to the right place. Without wasting any more time, let's make some delicious and unique green tomato sauce for pizza, pasta and dipping that will keep well in the pantry and will enhance the taste of your dishes to new heights. Step 1 involves sourcing the ingredients. And seeing how we already have the unripe green tomatoes due to above mentioned reasons, or maybe because you found a killer deal at your local farmer's market, or one of my favorites, hear this. It's the end of September and that family member or friend who spends all of their time tinkering in the soil comes over and dumps two bushels of green tomatoes on your porch and leaves before you have any time to react. Now, that's a blessing in disguise. Not only that, but they also throw a couple of bunches of herbs in as well. What a great person, huh? Well, just so I don't confuse you too much, here's the ingredient list. 7 kilos of green tomatoes, well washed. 2 kilos of red peppers, cleaned. 2 kilos of red onions, peeled. 2 kilos of carrots, peeled. 1 head of garlic, peeled. 500 milliliters of olive oil, all of them presented in the most unfocused and unprofessional camera work in the history of YouTube, but hey, it happens. Then you'll need 300 grams of sugar, 4 bay leaves, 2 tablespoons of sweet smoked paprika, 1 tablespoon of freshly ground black pepper, 3 tablespoons of rock salt, in my opinion it works best in preserves. And lastly, we need a bunch of fresh basil, thyme, oregano, sage and rosemary. It's really good that your crazy gardener friend dropped the green tomatoes and the herbs on your porch, right? Joke aside, that's the ingredient list and now let's transition into the tools we'll need for this unripe tomato sauce recipe. So very quick, you'll need a large pot, a good knife, a large wooden spoon and a chopping board, a couple of baking trays lined with baking paper, a slotted spoon, a food processor or blender, and of course a couple of jars of different shapes and sizes, whatever you prefer. Then, if you decide that you want to can the finished product and preserve it, you'll need a pair of canning tongs, a jar funnel, a ladle, and of course a pressure canner. Phew! That was a long list. Longer than a day of fasting. But I promise, the rest of the recipe is a breeze and the final product is well worth the couple of minutes of your time. So let's get prepping. Next, start your oven at 200 degrees Celsius or 392 Fahrenheit. Then place the green tomatoes and the garlic cloves on one tray or trays if you have a big batch. And while here, if you have larger green tomatoes like slicers and beef steaks, cut them into smaller pieces so that they cook simultaneous and to the same consistency as the smaller cherry or undeveloped ones. Big words, I know. Afterwards proceed to quarter the onion, carrots and peppers as they will cook more uniformly and get a beautiful caramelized surface when they are done. Mm -mm -mm. Delish. Once all the veggies are prepared and on the tray, drizzle the olive oil and sprinkle the salt all over them, trying to split them into equal amounts on the tray. I know that eventually they will all become one, but I love organized cooking, hence my instructions. Finally, if your oven is at temperature and you're done with the above, get the trays in the oven and cook everything for one hour to the minute. We want everything to be excellent and roasted, caramelized and infused with the many aromas and flavors of all of these delicious veggies. As you can see, the final result is a roaring success and now my tiny house smells just like grandma's house on canning day back when I was a kid. Enjoy the sight while you can, because next we'll blend everything together into a mysterious and amorphous paste. Just like the society we live in today. Yay us! Woohoo! But that mysterious paste will be the best and most delicious healthy green tomato sauce that you have ever tried. Next, bring that large pot closer, 
plug in the kitchen processor and start blending. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I will mention that it's a good practice to blend a bit of everything in each batch. A couple of tomatoes, some onion and carrots, a handful of herbs, and definitely, definitely do not forget about the juices left at the bottom of the baking tray. This juice is the essence, the alchemical distillation and taste energy of these veggies. You really don't want to lose that, trust me. The better we mix the ingredients now, the easier it is going to be later when we reduce it to the desired consistency. Speaking of that, before we begin cooking the sauce, we must add the last batch of ingredients. The sugar, the bay leaves, the ground pepper and the paprika. Personally, I cooked my batch for one and a half hour at medium to low heat while stirring the pot as often as possible. This time was enough for me to reduce it to what I consider a good consistency for my green tomato sauce for winter. Again, I want to emphasize that mixing often through the pot while it cooks is an essential task. Otherwise, there is a high risk of the sauce sticking to the bottom of the pot and ruining the flavor of your entire batch. So while you stir the pot like a witch of olden days, analyze and taste often to decide when the sauce is done based on your liking. I also take advantage of this waiting time and I sterilize my jars and lids to prepare for the magnificent cooking sauce that will be soon finished. My preferred method is to scald and sterilize them by using the kettle. It's quick, fun and safe. But I do boil the lids though. The sauce is done and we can proceed to jar it unless you made a very tiny batch and in that case you can use it straight away. But I assume most of you are here because you have a glut of unripe green tomatoes and you would hate to see them go to waste. So for those of you, let's jar the sauce. And I won't babysit and mansplain this to you. I believe that you are more than capable of this task and as long as you have a jar funnel and a pair of cannon tongs, you're all good. When it comes to preserving the sauce, you can can the jars in a couple of ways. Pressure canning, which is what I usually do, water bath canning, or even oven canning, which my mom is an expert at. But I'll be a total douchebag and not give you any advice on the canning process, not because I want to keep this occult knowledge only to myself and my mason friends, but because canning is no joke. It depends on the altitude you live at and a couple of other factors that I encourage all of you to learn and master. Canning is one of those lifelong benefiting skills that will pay you dividends like you can't imagine. But if done wrong or not taken seriously, it can really hurt you and your loved ones or worse. So I'm not in a position to teach you about canning, but if I was able to learn and adapt it to my condition, then you can do it as well. There's many resources online, there's books, there's free videos and tutorials, master classes. All you have to do is invest some of your precious time into this skill and you will benefit from it for the rest of your life. Everything can be preserved through canning. Remember that. I will say this much though. Having a couple of blankets or thick towels and using them to cover the can jars will ensure a slow, steady and secure pressurization. Say that again. Pressurization. Canning! Canning! Secure canning! Okay, here's the deal. Unripe tomatoes don't sound like something that will transform into a spectacular green tomato sauce for pizza or pasta. But this sauce is amazingly delicious. And you'll have to try it to believe me. My wife and I are obsessed with pizza. We actually have this weekly pizza night every Saturday evening where we bake some really delicious and satisfying pizzas. And this sauce is an excellent addition to any pizza night. Use it as a base, as a dip, or even to make other sauces with it, it covers all the bases. We love pizza so much and we've been doing this pizza night for so long that at one point we ran out of ideas <laughs> and a good friend sent us a 250 page book called Pizza Night 101 Incredible Pies to Make at Home. Thank you John. And this is not an endorsement for the book necessarily, just mentioning a great gift from a good friend. But if you would like to support me, you could check my wife's Etsy store where she creates these beautiful handmade serving boards that you see here. She is a great woodworker and a talented artist who uses food safe reclaimed wood and puts all of her soul in making them. They're great for serving pizza and charcuterie boards, picnics, fruit and veggie boards enjoyed on a fresh summer evening, 
and at many other friends and family gatherings where aesthetically pleasing and delicious foods are served. It would mean the world to me if you check the Etsy store and see if anything there speaks to your heart. Also, you know that old saying, happy wife, happy life. Wink, wink. So, thank you. Whether or not I've convinced you that my wife's woodworking is the best and most beautiful thing since triple bacon cheesy corn dogs, I am so happy and grateful that you decided to visit me today. I hope from the bottom of my heart that this green tomato harvest recipe will serve you well and avoid wasting a busload of unripe green tomatoes. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video to help me get the message out. That we are a self-reliant generation that doesn't actually live in their mom's basement until the age of 45. Here's to all of you millennials out there who make green tomato sauce and bake delicious homemade pizza each week. Enjoy it on my wife's serving boards, of course. See you next time.